Good morning everyone, time for another member update. I know I promised I was going to do an update of live trading yesterday, but I just couldn't catch any markets. I did catch Ripple's rise, uh, but I didn't have, I wasn't taping. So uh, I decided to do it this morning and it looks like it is probably going to be stellar on the move. I've been watching this one for a long, long time, just like I was watching Ripple. Uh, this one is the cheapest uh, quoted in USDT. So you can see down here price, 15 cents. So this is the stellar USDT chart. Now there's a stellar Bitcoin chart and the stellar USDT chart. What's the difference? Well, Bitcoin is a lot stronger than the US dollar. So, uh, but, you know, you want to check the technicals of both. So the question is, which technicals are valid? Well, they're both valid. You can see here in the technical picture from the Stellar Bitcoin market, it's not as bullish as the Stellar USDT market. So ideally, you want a chart where they're breaking out in both. I think that's the case with Ripple. Ripple's now up 63%. I think that Ripple's out in both. Certainly is broken out in Bitcoin, and so I would expect that it is, yeah. So, major move in Ripple. Um, yeah, we've gone from 24 cents to 71 cents, almost tripling. I caught some of that. So we're gonna, gonna try to catch Stellar as it does the same thing. And I've been expecting it to do the same thing. The reason why I'm expecting it to do the same thing is because I'm kind of seeing a pattern of people buying up these cheap coins. So the big question is, is it gonna do the same thing? And can we catch it? What I wanted to show you is when a coin is accumulated, uh, what happens to the ask. Now, unfortunately, with the dollar uh, quotes here, they're not very useful not nearly as useful as the uh, Bitcoin quotes because there's one tick between them. You can see though, the high since December 11th, let's go back farther. Okay, so we're looking at a high here of 1586. That's the one you wanna watch very carefully. You can see $13,000 is sitting at 1545. Is 1586 on the first screen? No, it's not. So it's a long ways away. You can load 100 more. Do we get 1586? No, we don't. Now we're up to $300,000 of Stellar for sale. Uh, was it, what did I say, 1586? 15867543. Wow, that's a weird number. 1586.7543, and that is right, here's 1586. That doesn't seem to be a big wall at that number, so that would indicate that that might not be technical resistance. So we wanna go over and analyze, it looks like we take a big jump here from 27 to 30 at 1574. You can see the jump from 17 to 22,000, uh, I'm sorry, 178,000 to 226,000 dollars from 15699 to 157. So yeah, there's a lot of overhead to get through. That doesn't mean we can't do it because you can see here that Stellar has done in volume, it's already done $7 million in dollar volume and it's done 1865 Bitcoin volume. So that's millions. So back to the uh, stellar Bitcoin chart. Um, yeah, it's, it's not too bullish. We wanna wait for something to develop. So I'll come back to it, I'll check it from time to time. Hopefully we can catch it and trade it while it's rising. It's not ready yet. The reason I say it's not ready yet is because it has too much overhead resistance here 
It has overhead resistance here, and it has overhead resistance here. You can see how many failed rallies there were. Okay, failed rally, crash. Failed rally, down. Failed rally, down again. Failed rally, down. Failed rally, down. It's trying to get through it. It's doing uh, the sort of stair step climb, but you can see we also have what happened back on the 5th and the 6th, where it ran very, very high relative to Bitcoin, 1236. And you can see the volume here. Okay, that's very, very heavy volume. That means there's significant overhead resistance. Uh, Bitcoin is rallying in a sort of mini bear, just kind of of a, of a rolling over of a top, but it's not, it's definitely not sick. Um, it's toppy, but it's not topping, if that makes sense. So this isn't really a pennant, it's just kind of a weird formation. I guess you can kind of make it into a pennant. Something like this. And the top of the pennant will be right about here, roughly. So this is going to show you the areas that we want to get through. This thing's very hard to control. Um, so the areas that we want to get through, close enough. It's roughly around 17,000. Because you can see on Bitfinex it hasn't spent hardly any time above 17,000. It sold off a lot of red candles here test, test, but it's trying to get through that. So it's trying to do an, another slingshot up there. So now one thing you have to keep an eye on, you have to keep a really careful eye on these coins because when they take off, they just, they run away. Ripple did that earlier. They just absolutely explode and it's hard to catch them. It's hard to stay with them. So hopefully we can catch this one. So. What we're going to look at here with Stellar is this bid stack. I'm sorry, the ask stack. So when you see, when you hear somebody say bid stack and ask stack, what does that mean? It means it's a stack of orders at a price. So you can see here, there's a huge stack at 955, nine at uh, 955 satoshis. There is one million. 79,000 Stellar for sale, which is worth 10 Bitcoin. And the sum total is 40 Bitcoins. So that's a, that's a big stack there. Also at 950, you can see there's 12. So this column is, is th these aren't individuals because when you get filled at one of these prices, you see multiple fills. But this is just all the people at that price combined together into one big stack. Okay, so, you know, is it going to behave the way something that's being accumulated behaves? Okay, so at 944, the fact that we have, we're 944 by 945 and doing green candlesticks. We need to get above this price right here and it's 9.45, so we need to take 9.46. Uh, 9.46, so this is the number that we all watch right here, because this is the total number of Stellar offered at 9.45. This number, if we're in a bull situation, this is what I saw earlier in Stellar, hopefully we'll see it in, I mean, earlier in Ripple, hopefully we'll see it in Stellar. But if it is what we saw in Ripple, then you'll see this number go down, sometimes rapidly, sometimes slowly, as it's being accumulated at the lowest offer. Now, one thing you can do that has served me very well is to just buy it before it disappears, especially if it's falling very rapidly. You'll start to see when the volume comes in, this will flash so fast that you can't even follow it. That's what Ripple was doing. 
So you can see we just ticked down to 8.9. So I will take a taste. Uh, I've got 2707, I'll buy 100 more at 945. Now you might ask, well, why would you buy at the highest price? Well, like I said before, you want to buy a rising market. The reason why is because markets that rise tend to rise more. Another thing that you can see is dropping seven now. We haven't seen 944 pop on here. Okay, sometimes 944 will drop, will pop onto this cell. In other words, you'll just see it appear right here, and this will go bid 943. The fact that it hasn't done that means it's strong. We want it to be strong if we're looking for a breakout. So when I get to the point where the chart is lining up and we're forming a pennant and we're getting ready to break out, although we've got quite a bit to go through, I start watching prices directly. These numbers. Okay, you can see we're down to 5.3 Bitcoins offered at 945. When I see this just about disappear, I'll grab another 100 seller. I know I'm not playing big. I should be playing in thousands. But I'm just trying to show you uh, the method. Let's make it a little bit larger. Let's buy 300, which is 0 0.002. Not a lot. If you don't risk a lot, you don't lose a lot. But you don't make a lot. That's uh, unavoidable quandary. So you can see we're bid 1.23 by 4.9 total Bitcoins on the bid at 944, total Bitcoins on the ask at 945. This number, we want to see this number larger than this number. But it won't stay at this price very long if it is because they will snap up those coins. So we're falling Slowly now, what gives me a little bit of pause is that there's the huge 12 bitcoins worth sitting there at 950. Uh, if the market's strong, it should just plow right through that. I saw a ripple chew through hundreds of bitcoin of wall. It just chewed right through it. And when you see it chewing through a wall like that, that's what creates these huge volume spikes. That's you can see, right, the volume spike we're on is tiny. There's virtually no volume here. We need volume like this to get through here. So 945 looks like it's going to tick up. I would not buy this. Uh, I just bought 100, but I would not buy any more because it's not, it's, it's just not aggressive enough. The other thing I keep up on the screen here in the up, up here in one of the tabs is the Bitcoin price. And you can see that Bitcoin is forming that pennant. You want to keep an eye on Bitcoin? Let's buy that 300. You, you want to keep an eye on Bitcoin because you want to know if your coin is trading in synchrony with Bitcoin or if it's trading in opposite of Bitcoin. Look, we just ticked to 944. Do you see that? 944 ticked on the ask. 942 on the bid. So someone's dumping. Now, if it's a strong, furious buying, you see, you occasionally see that, and it disappears right away. It's not disappearing. We've got 942, and that's the highest bid, and it's not aggressive. So you can see it's, it's pooping out. Even though the formation is perfect, even though everything is perfect about this, it's not getting the volume it needs. Now, we want to go back and check the USDT price because Bitcoin can carry it Sorry, that's stellar. You see what happens when you get a real serious breakout, like right there? It doesn't, it doesn't look back sometimes. So, what's a USDT price? Okay, we're getting there. Expect to see heavy volume enter stellar when the USDT price breaks into new, well, new, not all-time highs. I don't think. Oh. Maybe it is. Yeah. That's all time high. 1586. Yeah. That's huge if, if it can get through that price. As I've said before, 
there's nobody at a loss. There's nobody waiting to sell. So Stellar doesn't appear to be doing what I need it to do to accumulate it. It's not behaving correctly. It's 940 by 944. That should still be 944 by 945, and it's not. So it's not, it's not behaving properly. That doesn't mean it won't behave properly. It's just, it's not behaving properly right now. Uh, a 943 ask with a 945 on top of it, and that's a bot, why didn't they go at 944? Makes no sense. Maybe it's a market test, we don't know. Now 944 gets filled in. So, yeah, it's probably gonna dump. If I were heavy, long here, I would dump. Probably the entire position at this point. And be wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong a lot because uh, I don't, I try not to take, vir I try to take virtually no risk. And that's, you have to be a, a lightning trigger finger to take very little risk. You also have to be willing to sell on the bid and that's brutal because they'll drop that spread on you that those bots will drop the bottom right out of it. So you have to watch it carefully. This can go from 943 bid to 922. Boom. Those bots will pull their bids. But you don't have a choice. You can't chase the market down. And so, oh, what 944 put that up? Guess what? It goes 943, then 942. You're never getting filled. So that's another thing. Hopefully, I can show you if we get that move. So let's look over at Ripple while we're waiting for Stellar to move. Okay, so Ripple is in the type of accumulation phase that we're looking for. Do you see this action? Do you see this? Do you see how much it's moving? 46.16, 46.24, just jumped. 46.26, do you see this getting chewed up? 46.20. 46.37, right here. Boom, it took it. There's nothing here in the stack. Do you see that? 38, 40, 42, there's nothing in the stack. It's gonna chew through it because there's nothing there. 46.38, 46.46, we're high for the move. How high is it going to go? Who knows? How high can it go? This is a pattern that you see a lot with Poloniex. I don't know what it means, but you see previous spikes. They're, they're ghost prices. There's a ghost price at 45.91. I, I don't know what it means, but we're through it. So Ripple, unfortunately, I didn't even keep a small position. Uh, I definitely should have just pyramided this thing. Ripple is absolutely blasting off. Definitely too late to get in. Uh, you, could, you could get in on pullbacks but it's not really having any of those. So you can see we form this sway back into new highs, big volume. Another sway back into new highs, big volume. Same thing, big volume. Same thing, big volume. Same thing, big volume. Same pattern over and over and over again. Now this is gonna correct it's probably going to correct in a five minute period, probably down to about 3072. This is the base, anywhere between 2500 and 30. I would say that your accumulation price is gonna be about 3050. So if I was gonna accumulate this, I'd put a bid in at 3050. 3050. And I want to buy, say, 0.01 Bitcoin worth of, of uh, Ripple at 3050. Will I get in? I might. Might not. These often take huge dives. And you're not going to get in unless you have a bid in the market waiting for it because it's going to be too fast. You, it'll just disappear on you. There's no way to do it. 
So that's how you can buy a rising market trying to uh, check for corrections. Uh, if you're extremely bold, you just simply buy that green candle and, and hope and pray that it's going to keep going. Uh, that's not for me. You can buy the breakout. Uh, I don't, I've never used a buy stop here. I don't trust the exchange, but you could use a buy stop. You can see that if you had a, the high price here in Ripple was um, 42.31 was the high. You could have put a buy stop at 42.32. And it, it would have just taken you in and carried you away. You'd be up 10% right now with a buy stop on that breakout. So that would, that would have been a perfect buy stop. This one here would have been a head fake breakout. You see that? Still went up. Depending on how how hard you could you know you were able to hold it, how wide you were running your stops, either mentally or in in fact, you would that would determine whether you'd be able to hold on. This breakout, it held. You could have used a buy stop. The question is, would have this would this have taken you out? When you got back to even right here and maybe down just a little bit, would you have been taken out? So that's uh, that's how you can accumulate it on the buy. I like to accumulate it on the pullbacks. Uh, unfortunately, when you accumulate something on the pullbacks, if the pullbacks don't come, you not you don't get in. This was a great pullback to accumulate on. This was a great pullback to accumulate on. But this pullback here would have been very disturbing, hard to accumulate on that pullback because it's just so bizarre. So, like I showed you before, I don't think we're going to get this with Stellar. Uh, if, if I do catch it, I will post another video when it, when it does it so I can show you, hopefully with me buying it. Ripple's up 79%. Bitmark is irrelevant, nobody cares. Pascal coin, nobody cares. Digibyte is up 29%. That's an extremely low price coin at 119 Satoshis. That one can move, but the stacks are huge. There's just a ton of Bitcoins on the bid and the offer. I've played it before, but it's hard to play. Florin coin, I took my profit in. It was too much, I had to take it. Same thing with library credit. So I'm not really even up, I don't think. Uh, okay, I think I'm up $100 since, since you saw me last. It's, yeah, it's that hard. It's uh, very easy to lose money, and it's very hard to make money. Don't know why that is. Should be like a coin toss, but that's not, that's not how it is. It's very, very difficult. So a couple of things I check. Always check the volume. Who's the busiest? Bitcoin Cash. That's a lot of volume, but it's Bitcoin Cash. Um... Very nice pennant forming up, but the coin is so expensive. Hard for a coin that big to move that far. Litecoin is still in a correction phase. Ethereum definitely perked up, but it's kind of correcting now. Monero has been pretty much asleep. You can see that just sideways movement. Stellar comes in here, seventh on the chart. That's another reason why I always keep an eye on Stellar is because it's so cheap and it's always so high on the volume chart. Zero Cash, Zcash, is trying to make a continuation move. That pattern that I pointed out before. So check that. The other thing I check is percentage change losers. Because sometimes you will pick up a coin that is in a correction phase in a tremendous bull run where you can pick it up on the cheap. Like library credits here, if you're completely convinced that this move is going to hold, I I'm not with both Florin and library. They bounce up and down so much that they just don't seem to hold. And that's why you watch the volume here. You see 68 Bitcoin volume total for a 24 hour period. That's not enough volume. 
That means a pump and dump manipulator can pump and dump the coin. We're bid 2184 by 2198 ask. The coin's too thin. So, but that's another thing to keep an eye on is the percentage change up, the percentage change down. Remember, you have to look in USDT as well. Percentage change winner in US dollar is Ripple, up 78%. Percentage change loser is Litecoin, down 3.6%. That's pretty much everybody winning with the Bitcoin price at 16.5 and wanting to go higher. So that's got to put us very, very close to $500 billion market cap. I know Litecoin has bled off. There we are, 517. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm always saying my prediction. We still have 17 days to gain $480 billion in Bitcoin market cap. Can Bitcoin double in 15 days? Yep. I mean, can all the coins double in 15 days? Yep. Absolutely can happen. If it does, uh, I, then I'll do a video about it and release it publicly and cover my interview with Elijah. But I, I feel nearly vindicated considering that I predicted that Bitcoin would be a trill, um, all coins would be a trillion dollar market cap by the end of the year. And they're sitting here at 517 billion. And for all I know, uh, it's actually higher. I don't know if these other sites, uh, I don't know if this site lists all of them. So I don't know if you can find all of them together. You can probably just add up the highest market caps and uh, get close. So we've got 278 and 66 and 33. So yeah, it's gonna be hard to add them all up. Uh, maybe we have a column down here at the bottom. That'll give us a total. Probably not. There you go. 515. So very close to the world coin index number. That's just the difference between um, how many coins they list. 517. So world coin index probably list a couple of coins here that that other coin site doesn't list. But I based my prediction on World Coin Index anyway, so I'm going to go on that. So look for a video if I, by the beginning of next year, I'll do a video either way. Probably review that interview with Elijah and talk about um, my prediction. Let's see if Stellar's going. So you can see in dollar, Stellar's trying to take off. Mm. This could be it. That's a very, very bullish formation in USDT. So as I said before, high sitting at 15.86. Now we have, let's see if it loads onto the second page. See, now it's on the second page. We only have 163,000 now. So it's, it's chewing up through a lot of money. It's chewed through a couple hundred thousand dollars. So we've got about 20 grand sitting at 15.6. The same thing works with USDT, it's just not as liquid, so the bid ask is, is pretty wide. You can see the bid ask is 15 and a half cents, the bid is 15 and a half cents, and the ask is 15.6 cents. So a tenth of a cent, or I'm sorry, yeah, a tenth of a cent. But when you're talking about 15 cents, that's a, a, that's a big percentage. So we want to see this close in on 15.6. You can see the candlesticks are getting wider. The volume is building. Uh, we're, we're coming to a crescendo here. You can see that it, it's ticked above this top, this top, and it's significantly above that top. It looks like it's above that. Yeah, it's above that top. It's just got this, this one right here. It's got to get through. So we're going to change the candles a little bit. Get larger green candles. 
Do you usually see one candle bust through? No, usually not. It usually isn't a lone candle that makes it through, but it can happen. I think it happened with Ripple. So all you do is just keep an eye on this price, 1586. And that's gonna be a big, big buy point because it's at new all-time highs forever. It's the highest price it's ever been at 15.86 cents. As I said before, that means everybody who owns it is making money. So hopefully it does it pretty soon. I'm not gonna hold my breath and keep the video going because it could be a long time. But if I do happen to catch one live, I really do wanna show you the fury of the buying down here on this ask stack. Because not only does that indicate to you how to buy, but it also indicates when to sell. And another thing you can do is sell into this stack. Um, what I do is I go down here and look for the jump off points. Okay, do you see how that has 15, 6, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, And there's twice as much right there one Satoshi higher. So why would you put your sell price at 15.7 when you can put it at 15.699? Or even better, you know, just one below that. Because it makes no difference in price, but you're going to get filled before that person. So I will jump up and uh, put a sell in. So I'll pick, say, this spot here. I'd go to 15.999. I'd change this to an 8 to go right below them and I'd sell a percentage. In this case, 33% would only be a thousand dollar. But that's an example of how I would scale out of the position. That's how I got in and got out of Ripple today. Did I time it right? No, I definitely did not time it right. I didn't stay in long enough uh, and I didn't accumulate enough when I was in, but uh, I was not very aggressive with Ripple. Uh, I'm a little bit scared of Ripple, partly because of fundamental reasons. The technical picture is absolutely fantastic. You can't argue with the technical picture of 86%, 86% in a 24-hour period. So hopefully we'll catch Stellar breaking out. Uh, I will do a video of it if I do catch it so I can show you that ass stack. One uh, news story that I did want to cover, or sort of fundamental news story. Uh, Jennifer and I were talking about silver bugs and, and gold bugs. And one thing I brought up was the fact of how, how many times the West has busted the Chinese. We know the West has busted the Chinese twice using silver. So they basically traded with the Chinese and the Chinese accumulated a tremendous amount of wealth and the Chinese stored their wealth in silver. The West demonetized it. Uh, the other instance was the Opium War, which is where they went in and got all the population addicted to opium so that they wouldn't spend all that silver. <laughs> so the British could sell them opium and get their silver. So the Chinese have been screwed over at least twice with their money. Now, I'm wondering whether this is going to be the third time. Now, why do I say that? Well, I just read an article recently on Zero Hedge about central banks possibly going to Bitcoin as reserve. So think about that. If central banks started to go to Bitcoin as their reserves, what does that do to gold? I don't think it's going to be as devastating to silver, but it would be absolutely devastating to gold. I think when the silver was demonetized, the Chinese wealth, I think China's wealth was at least cut in half and it may have declined by 80 or 90 percent. I can't, I don't have the figures offhand, but it absolutely devastated the Chinese because they had spent centuries accumulating all of that wealth 
and it was essentially declared not to be wealth. Now, you know, you might ask, well, how could you possibly do that? How can you just declare it? Well, it was it was a conspiracy. It was Western countries. Remember, this is through trade. So Western countries simply conspired together and agreed they weren't going to use it as money anymore. Well, that destroyed the seniorage. That destroyed the reserves. That destroyed everything. It created glut. It crashed the price in dollars and pounds and yen. And, and then so it destroyed the Chinese. They couldn't just trade with themselves. Is that going to happen again? I'll do a video on it because it's a pretty big topic. But the Chinese have been amassing gold for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. We don't know. Probably the majority since about 2001 because they really didn't have too much of an economy up until that point. But from about 2000, early 2000s to now, at least 15 years, they've been amassing gold. Is the West going to outsmart them again? You tell me. We'll do a video on it uh, coming up soon, and we'll talk to you next time.